Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is the second lecture of session 12. We are still talking about why the mean matters. In the first lecture, we talked about what we mean by the average and what we mean by the standard deviation. And this lecture, inshallah, we will cover uh, multiple questions. The first one, what do we mean by standard units? The second is how can we spot uh, standard the standard deviation on bell-shaped curves or also whether we can spot it in uh, general curves. And uh, finally, we will discuss about uh, the central limit theorem and why it is important. Let's start with standard units. So what do you mean by standard units? The standard units is the number of standard deviations above average. So if we have a value uh, in a list of values, in a collection of values, to compute the standard units of that value, we uh, subtract the average of that value and divide by the standard deviation. We call this value here z. So that's how many standard deviations uh, this value is far from the average. So if this value is negative, then the value is below average. If it's positive, then it is above average. And if it's zero, then it is equal to the average value. Let's see a demo and see uh, more about the standard units. So here is a function that computes the standard units of a, uh, a list of values. We uh, subtract the mean of these values from each value of that uh, of that list or, or that array and divide by the standard division of all of these values. So uh, we'll try that on the uh, data set of uh, new, uh, newborn babies that we saw many times before. Uh, we will focus on the column of the ages of the mothers. So if we apply that, uh, we, if we take the column of matern maternal age and uh, compute the standard units for each value, we will get uh, this uh, uh, these standard units. Let's show them uh, alongside with the you know, with the actual ages. So here is the table that has both. This this is the ages in years, and this is the age ages in standard units. So um, for example, this age is about one standard uh, unit from the average. Okay, so that means that the value of that age is uh, the average plus one standard deviation of uh, of this uh, of this data of this list of values um, and this is again also about one which is the same age and uh, here this value is is very close to zero which means that it is very close to the average um, now let's look at the histogram of ages here so that's uh, the histogram of course this is not uh, symmetric um, it's a bit skewed to the right there's a, a bit of a tail here. Um, let's see the um, histogram of the standard units. So that's the histogram of the first column. Let's see the histogram of the second column, which is the age in standard units. You will see that it is very, very similar um, to uh, the original uh, uh, histogram, which is, uh, of course, expected because this is just um, we, um, we, we made a transformation that is linear transformation. Uh, so the histogram uh, will not change. Of course, from the column of the uh, standard units, we can now uh, see the ranges that are indicated in the uh, Chebyshev uh, inequalities. Uh, for example, we can easily see the, um, uh, the values or the ratio of the values or the percentage of the values that are within two standard uh, standard units or standard deviations from the average. So if we select only the rows that are between minus two and two from the column of the standard units, uh, and we divide by the number of rows, we will get the percentage. Um, if you remember from last time, from last lecture, um, the um, uh, the bound, the lower bound that Chebyshev uh, uh, expected is at least seventy five percent. Uh, between uh, within the uh, within two standard deviations or from the average uh, here we can see it is about 95 percent okay so that's about a standard unit so standard unit is how far the value is from the average in the unit of standard division so how many standard divisions units 
uh, the value is far from the average. Let's get back to the uh, slides. Um, and now let's talk about uh, the relation between the standard deviation and the histogram. Or more specifically, if we are given a histogram like the one that we just saw here, can we, can we uh, um, uh, predict or estimate the value of the standard deviation? Of course, generally, we cannot. Uh, if we are given any histogram, it is not easy to estimate the standard deviation by just looking at the histogram. But in a very special case, when the histogram has a bell shape, then we can. Then we can. So uh, let's see a demo uh, on that. Um, here we will continue with the same data set, but we will focus on the height, uh, on the height of the mothers. So let's see the histogram of the heights of the mother, of the mothers here. We will see that it is bell shaped. Okay, so it's not skewed as the uh, histogram of the ages. It is bell shaped um, and it's kind of symmetric. So before we look at the standard deviation, we can also estimate the average. So if, as we said last time, if we are given a histogram and the histogram is symmetric, then the value at the center is almost the average. So um, here, uh, it seems like the average is about 64 and something. Okay, so it's ab about uh, here. That's the average. Now, for the standard deviation, if we are given a bell-shaped curve like that, then to get the, stand the value of the standard deviation, we start from the top of the curve and we go down, okay, down the curve. Now, you, you uh, notice that the curve here is like upside-down cup. Okay, so you move with that upside-down cup until you reach a point where the cup will be reversed to be an up-straight cup. Okay, so at almost at this point, the curve will be uh, will be the opposite. Okay, will will reverse or will inflict in uh, more uh, specifically. Um, so at that point, this is almost one standard deviation from the average. So if we said that the average is about uh, 64 and this is about 66, uh, maybe 0.5, then the standard deviation is about 2.5. So this inflection point indicates how far is or how wide is the standard deviation. Okay, and that's only if we have a bell shaped curve. That's only if we have a bell shaped curve. Let's see the mean and standard deviation for this curve and see how uh, uh, good were our, estimate, our estimates uh, were. So the um, average is 64, as we see here, it's around the center, and the standard deviation is 2.52, which is about what we saw here. So that's, if we think that this is the inflection point, then this is about uh, 66 something, then from 64, it's about 2.5, okay? So, um, so if the histogram is bell shaped, as we see here, then at the inflection point, probably at this point, it the curve reverse or inflict from the upside upside down curve, uh, cup to a straight uh, up cup. Okay, so uh, at that uh, inflection point, this uh, distance is the standard deviation. Okay, why, why from this point? Because this point is the center of the curve, which is the average. So the average is at the center, and the standard deviation is the distance between the average and points of inflection on either side. Of course, we have another point of inflection uh, at that side, which is one standard deviation below the average. Okay, because it is symmetric. Now, um, this curve, the bell-shaped curve, or any bell-shaped curve, they are very similar to each other, okay? Except that the values uh, on the x-axis might be different. So the, the bell-shaped curve might be centered at 15 or might be centered at 0.2 or, or 1.7 and so on. So the values at the x-axis might change, but the shape of the curve 
uh, is uh, very similar, and they are all come from one specific uh, curve, which is called the standard normal curve or the standard normal distribution. So the standard normal distribution, I think you are very familiar with it uh, from the other uh, statistics or mathematics uh, courses in your high school in the, and in the university. It has a very beautiful formula, uh, which is this one. And uh, I promise you that we will not use it at all in this course. Just show it here because it, it is familiar to you or should be familiar to you, but we will not use it. So that's the formula for the standard normal curve. And of course, this is the shape of the standard normal curve. The center of the standard normal curve is at zero and the standard deviation is exactly one. Okay, as you see here, the, at, the, at the inflection point, it is uh, one standard deviation. So the standard deviation is one and the, and the center is zero. So the, um, the average is zero. And of course, the area of a standard normal curve under the standard normal curve is one. Um, now, a question is, how big are most of the values in the uh, standard normal curve? If we think of this as a histogram, then um, uh, how big the values are or how, uh, what is the variability of the values uh, under the normal curve, under standard normal curve? Of course, we can get back to the uh, Chebyshev uh, inequality or the informal statement of, uh, of Chebyshev, which is that no matter what the shape of the distribution is, the bulk of the data are in the range average plus or minus a few standard deviations. So we discussed this uh, statement last time, and this statement holds for all distributions. Okay, so regardless of the distribution or regardless of the shape of the distribution, the bulk of the data are in the range average plus or minus a few standard deviations. But here we have a special kind of a distribution, which is the normal distribution uh, or the gen in general, the bell-shaped uh, distributions. In that case, almost all of the data are in the range average plus or minus three standard deviations. So let's compare between the normal uh, distribution and the and all distributions based on Chebyshev's uh, inequality. So within one standard deviation, Chebyshev says that it's almost it at it's at least zero percent, which is of course useless. But for the normal distribution, about sixty eight percent of the values are within one standard deviation from the average. Chebyshev says that it is at least from, for all distribution, that is at least 75% of the values within two standard deviations. For the normal curve, it is about 95%. So that's why in the previous slide, we say that uh, almost uh, all the uh, values under the normal distribution is within two standard deviations from the average. It's actually 95% of them. Um, Chibi Chief says that at least 88.8% are within three standard deviations from the average. For the normal curve, it is 99.73%. So almost all, actually, it's, you can say all, the values are within three standard deviations from the average. Notice that here we say at least, and here we say about. Why is that? Because here we are talking about specific shape specific distribution, which is the normal distribution. Okay. Uh, would it make a difference if we say here standard or normal distribution? Actually, it's not because um, standard is just centered at zero and standard division is one, but it is the family of normal distribution that has these properties. Okay. So any normal distribution has uh, these properties. Um, of course, when we talk about the bulk of the data, let's see where are uh, this bulk of the data. So that's the yellow area here is 95% of the area, which is exactly at two standard deviations from the average. Okay, so the areas, the blue areas are actually, uh, these, the total area of them is 5%, which means that each of these sides is 2.5% almost. Okay, so that's the uh, normal uh, 
uh, distribution and that's the central area of the normal distribution which shows clearly that most or, at more, uh, or almost all the data in, in, in particular 95% of the data uh, are within two standard deviations from the average. Now that brings us to a very important statistical theory which is the central limit theorem. So uh, remember last uh, in the last lecture when we talked about why um, we uh, we compute or why we um, chose the way we compute the standard deviation. We said that we, uh, we had two reasons. The first one was the chip chip uh, inequality. The second one is the standard is the uh, central limit theorem. So the central limit theorem says that if we are given a population and we took a, a random sample from that population. Okay, so we start with a population. We take a random sample from the population. If that sample is large and drawn at random with replacement, then regardless of the distribution of the population, regardless of how the population distribution shape looks like, then the probability distribution of the sample sum, or of course the mean, is roughly normal, is roughly normal, okay? So what does that mean? If we have a population and we don't know what the distribution of the population is, but we took a large random sample from that population, okay? Now this large random sample, we will compute the mean of it. So we have a sample sum or a sample mean. Of course, both are very similar. The only difference is that we divide the sum by the number of, by the sample size, okay? But the distribution will be the same. So if we take the mean or uh, the sum of uh, the values in this sample, then this sample mean or sample sum or sample average is, co is coming from a probability distribution that is roughly normal that is roughly normal, okay? Notice that we started with a population that we, we have no idea about its actual distribution. So from any population, any population, if we take a random sample and we compute the mean, then this mean comes from a probability distribution that is roughly normal, or we can say that it comes from a normal probability distribution. Let's see a demo on that. So here we'll talk about the data set of uh, United Airlines flights in uh, summer 2015. We saw it uh, before. So here is the data set. Uh, each row here is one flight in that date. That's the flight number, that's the destination, and that's the delay. And we will focus, of course, here on the delay. Okay, so let's see the shape of uh, the histogram of the delays, assuming that this is the entire population. Okay, so that's the entire population of United Airlines uh, flights within uh, that time. So let's look at uh, the shape of the histogram. Here is the histogram of the delays. Of course, this is not bell-shaped. It's very skewed to the right. There's a long tail here. It's not normal, of course. It's not bell-shaped. It's not symmetric. Okay, so this is uh, uh, usually the case when we have a population that um, uh, that we don't know its distribution, it can happen to have this distribution. So you will see that in the central uh, uh, limit theorem, we don't have any assumption about the distribution of the population. Okay, so it happens in this case that the uh, distribution is like this. Now let's see what's the mean and the standard deviation for uh, this uh, distribution. Okay, so the mean and the standard deviation is the following. That's the mean, which is 16, so, so very uh, close to this area. Okay, and the standard deviation is about 39.4. So the average day is about 16, and the uh, standard deviation is about 39. It's much more than the average. Now, how about the median? If you remember from previous lectures, the median was just two minutes. Okay, so the median uh, flight delay was just two minutes. But of course, as you see here, the delay can go 
uh, even beyond uh, probably two hours, 120 minutes. But the median is two. Okay. Now let's take uh, let's uh, um, let's do an experiment where we take a sample from this population. Okay. So we'll start by writing a general uh, function that we will use later multiple times to get a sample, a random sample from the uh, the data that we have, and uh, compute the mean of it. Okay. So um, this is the function. Okay. We take a sample. For with uh, with that specific sample size, and we compute the mean of uh, that sample. So let's call this function one time with a sample size of 100. Here is what we get, 20.62. Remember that the average, so that's the average of that sample. Now the average of the population is 16.65. Of course, if we took another sample, we can get a different number, which is 14 here, a third sample, 8, and so on. Okay, so... Whenever we have a sample, the average, of course, will change. Now, let's look at the distribution of the sample mean, which means that we will draw multiple samples and we uh, plot the histogram to see the distribution of the sample mean. Okay, so we'll write a general uh, function that will um, repeat this process 10,000 times taking a sample and getting the mean and adding it to the array. Okay, so of course you saw this so many times in the course. Now we'll call this function with a sample size of 100. So sample means 100 means we will repeat 10,000 times taking a sample and compute the means for it. Okay, so uh, that's the, um, the array. Okay, so every element here is the sample mean is the mean of one sample of 100 elements okay 100 flights okay and you see this is uh, the uh, the whole set of uh, of uh, means of sample means of course the length of it is 10000 okay because we repeat it 10000 times now let's see the histogram so we will uh, now plot the histogram of these values. Here is the histogram. Okay, it looks like, of course, a bell-shaped curve, and it's like very similar to a normal curve. Okay, bell-shaped curve or normal curve. Okay, so that's what the central limit theorem told us that if we take a sample, a large sample, of course, here it is just one hundred. If we take a large sample large sample that is random sample if we take a large random sample from a population it comes from a uh, normal distribution okay and to show that we we made we we did that multiple times actually 10,000 times in this case and we draw the histogram of the sample means and you see very clearly that it is a normal distribution now, let's change the sample size and see what will be the effect on the distribution. Okay, so here we tried a sample size of 100. Let's try a sample size of 400. Okay, so we'll do the same. We'll call the same function, but now with a sample size of 400. Remember that this function will draw a sample of 400 and compute the mean and repeat that 10,000 times. So let's call this and... Um, wait for the uh, histogram. Of course, it will take more time than the time needed to uh, to do the uh, ten thousand times of a hundred uh, sample. Now we got it, okay. Um, and here is the shape. Here is the shape. Now, what is the average of that histogram? What is the average of that histogram? So, since this is this looks like a normal distribution and it is symmetric, then the average is somewhere in the center, so probably it is like 16.5 or something, okay? Remember that the population average was 16.65, okay? So it's very, um, uh, it's very close to the actual average of the population. Same here, okay? Same here. If you look at the center of the curve, it will be around 16 or 17, okay? 
Now, the other observation from looking at these two curves together is that, um, so we said that they are centered around almost the same uh, average, but of course, the standard deviation is different. So this, um, this curve is much wider than this curve. Okay, notice that we got this curve from a sample size of 400. We got this curve from a sample size of 100. Okay, so it seems like there is a, an, a noticeable effect of the sample size on how wide or narrow the uh, distribution of the sample mean. Okay, now let's try one more time with a different sample mean, uh, with a different sample size, which is 900. Okay, of course, this will take much more time than before. Okay, so we'll leave it uh, running. Now, let's look again to uh, the two curves. We will see that when we increase the sample size, the distribution gets narrower. Okay, or in other words, the standard deviation is smaller. Okay, notice that the uh, axes here are on the same scale. Okay, so that uh, we can easily compare between the two curves. Okay, so when the sample size is 400, the standard deviation, which is, I think the inflection point is somewhere around here, is, um, uh, is uh, of course, less than the standard deviation. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the inflection point, probably it will be around here. Okay, so the standard deviation here is smaller. Now, what, we expect, what do we expect when we increase the sample size to 900? Here is what we got. Okay. As expected, it, it, it is even narrower. The standard deviation is even smaller here. Okay, so now look at the three shapes, if we can uh, make it. It is very clear that this is sample size 100, this is sample size 400, this is sample size 900. It is getting even smaller. Now, what is the implication of this? When we increase the sample size and we compute the mean, then the sample mean will be, uh, will be coming from a normal distribution of smaller standard deviation, or the, uh, the shape of the histogram will be narrower. So inshallah, in the next lecture, we will see a very important implication of this theorem. See you inshallah, or talk to you inshallah in the next lecture. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.